Jay here for Stretford Paddock, and that is my favourite Joe, Joe McGrath. This is the brew. No Stephen Allison this week, but don't worry, he'll be back soon. How are we doing, brother? You good? I'm very good today. Bit of rain across Manchester. I was out filming, so I feel like like a drenched rat. Yeah. Um, and the brew in front of me is a lukewarm glass of water. Wow. That I had to rob from one of the uh, assistants here. Um, I, I'm doing all right. I'm enjoying myself. So what was your filming going? You can tell us. We were doing some new food content. You know, I like my food, don't I, Jake? We were yeah. doing some new food content, and I was going to do some uh, food eating with Max Smith from the Stephen Tries podcast. Oh. We're bringing out a new food channel, but it's not reviewing food because what there's is too it? many reviewers. Right. It's a bit more hectic, it's a bit more fun, a bit more lighthearted. So what's the sort of, what's the hook? The sort of hook what's is... What's the USP? We do challenges. What, we like? do cook-alongs. We're going to bring a Michelin star chef to an all-you-can-eat buffet, see what they make of it. Like just different Love bits that. like that yeah. to make see if we can make the most out of the food world without just reviewing again. Yeah. I love all that. Like That's a bit different, yeah? Yeah, different. So, taking him to a buffet, Michelin star food. A, food, uh, a chef yeah, taking chef. him to a food, a, yeah. a world buffet. Right, okay. What else? Anything else? Any so, other ideas? You can show You know, me? like, we uh, uh, love a fried chicken shop in the UK. Yeah. They're often named after US states. Yeah. We've got a challenge like, next week. Um, Florida. Yeah, or... New York. Madrid. <laughs> Madrid fried chicken. Yeah, or... Oh. We were Paris. saying today, I wonder if, like, say, Florida or or Hawaii, have they got UK names as their fried is chicken? Is there, like, salt? a Weast fried chicken? Yeah, is there Carlisle fried chicken? Yeah. Right, okay. Is in, there, you know, in, in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they do the same yeah, as we do? Mean, imagine there's an Ipswich fried chicken in, like... Oh, you know, you'd love it. <laughs> in South Dakota. So what hey. we're going to try... South Dakota's good. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and eat as many fried chicken states yeah. in 12-hour period yeah. in Great Manchester as possible. Have you got a list? I'm I've, got, list. I've got 12 already. Really? So if anyone knows any... US states. Guess what I found out? Go I on. found an Alaska fried chicken. Alaska? I thought that was going to be the hardest. Yeah. That was easy. Really? Alaska. That doesn't seem like a place where you go, Alaska, oh yeah, they're famous for the fr fried chicken. Let's name our shop Alaskan fried chicken. Yeah, it's in Cali, in Stockport. <laughs> Mad that Alaskan it. fried chicken. I love it, right? If you're from Alaska, let us know. Is there a Gatley fried chicken <laughs> in your in your uh, state? Any of our... Um, what, what's this? What's the town? Big town called in uh, Alaska? Anchorage. I don't really know much about Anchorage. Alaska. That's it. If you're from Anchorage or anywhere else in Alaska and you're watching, go, let me know if there's a Gatley Fried Chicken and make sure as well you're hitting subscribe. We've got to seven hundred thousand subscribers. Congratulations. Um, there's a bit of a twist to this brew. We're not this got week. any brew. Well, there's that. Also, we've given producer Ethan a camera. We've gone full sloppy Joe's here. This is what you lot do. There Hello. he is. Hello. Go on, Hello. Ethan. Hey. Does not like he's behind bars this time? Yeah, time, what's right? going on? When you're on sloppy Joe's, you don't look like that. Why have you just lowered the standard now you're doing the brew? Well, it's quite hard to frame up your own camera, and I don't really tr trust Joe McGrath to do such a job. It's usually Joe Smith who does such a thing. So I've tried to make it as good as possible. Hopefully, I don't look like I'm... Um, Arrested or anything? It's all like seen the Silence of the Lambs where she goes to visit the. It uh, does, doesn't it? It does look yeah, like Clarice Starlin. He's yeah. um, he's visiting. He you. was a wrong good money. Who Hannibal Lecter? That's a controversial opinion. <laughs> he was There'll a wrong. Many of them in the. Uh, he he was a wrong gun. That That's the least many. controversial opinion heard on this podcast. Uh, he was a bit of a wrong gun. Money eating people and that. It's not yeah, about that one. Robbing faces. It? Yeah, he does that. Hey, good escape though. When he cut off the geezer's face and you pretended to be him. Is that, and then is just that, gets carted out, doesn't it? doable? I don't know if you've ever seen The Office, the US Office, where he does it with the, yeah, yeah, the dog. That is cool. Yeah, that's that's that. class. One that. of the best scenes in TV, that. The, yeah. Where, where, where they're doing, uh, they're singing the Bee Gees, Staying Alive. Yeah. <laughs> they start from the beginning. He the starts off singing, I will survive. Yeah. Yeah. First I was afraid. <laughs> I was afraid. He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's so yeah. good. And then everyone starts dancing and singing. Yeah, oh, like, I love that. That and the... Uh, is that the same one, the fire drill? Fire drill. The and fire do you know why? Do you know why? I, I learned something <laughs> about this, right? The fire drill is the same one. And here's why the, the fire drill the fire and that. so funny. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? it like, he's like, use the adrenaline to focus your mind. <laughs> and, then, and they're all screaming, every man for himself. <laughs> oh, the cat drops down. The cat, yeah, and Oscar falls down. Yeah. Like, oh, it's so good, that. That is genuinely one of the funniest it's Intros unbelievable. And then anything. they go from that to that scene. Yeah. Well, here's why. So they, sp they spent a lot of cash on a Super Bowl advert for The Office right. on the Sunday. Yeah. And that episode aired that following week. So they knew that they had to make sure whatever the episode was going to be after the big Super Bowl money advert yeah. was a belter. And that's what... That is elite. That elite, is elite television. So that. you wonder why that episode is so good. Because they spent 
load of cash yeah. on a big old advert and then boom, there it is. Oh, it's quality. Man, you know it? your stuff, you don't you? I hey, like the office. We've already got people in the chat as well. People getting involved in the comments in the chat. Make sure you are as well. Make sure you're hitting subscribe. Make sure you're hitting like. Make sure you uh, subscribe to Sloppy Joe's podcast as well. Very, very funny podcast with both Joe McGrath, Joe Smith, and also Ethan James, who's on this podcast today. We've brought him in because we're going to get his take on a few things. Michael Dyson, who's a me- been a member of the Academy for 17 months, says, Congratulations. We complain about waiting 10 years for a title, yet Phil Leotardo had to endure 20 years in the can and he never even spoke about it much. Did you ever watch The Sopranos? I started it and we're yeah. going to continue it, so please Where are you no up spoilers. To? Where are you up to? Episode 2. Of what series? Si- I think it's 1. Si- yeah. <laughs> We started it, and we're like, right, this is going to be yours. Started it, where are you up to? He's I'm up still, to the credits on the first episode. It's he's having about, therapy it's, it's still. about the mafia, isn't it? He's having therapy. Yeah. Does that last throughout the whole thing? I hope not, I'm a bit bored by that. But yeah, well, he's having therapy. That's kind of the point of the programme, is his therapy and the reasons behind it. I mean, it. it's really good. It's amazing. And it's, you know, from the first two episodes, it is brilliant. Yeah, it is but, really uh, good. I, I love it. I'm kind of obsessed with it, and me and McCall have got some plans when we're in New Jersey and New York. Sopranos related oh, content. Yeah. We're going to New Jersey, aren't we? You're involved. I'm yeah. excited for so that. So we'll be doing a little bit of Sopranos themed. Ethan's posts. up there as well. Ethan, Ethan, you're joining us, aren't you, in America? Oh yes. I'll Do you like the Sopranos? That. Um, I don't know a lot about the Sopranos. Um, I think we're talking about what's the protagonist, the actor's name again? What's he called? Um, James Gandolfini. Oh yes. Him. Uh, yes, I was reading about his death the other day. That's that's as much as I know about it. Okay, good. Yeah, right. Not good that he died. But yeah. yeah, you know, you know, you know, the main actor died. That's a start. You yeah. know what it's about. If this was the sloppy jobs, right? I'd go have on. to give more on this, but I know this is no. Go on. What do you mean you're reading about his death? Um, I I was just quite interested um about like famous people's deaths and that and how how they Such died. Go on then. It was quite a young death. I think he he was in the bathroom and he had a heart attack. Yeah, he was in his fifties, I think. Yeah, obviously, well young. before his time. Yeah, fantastic actor. One of the uh, for me the best telev- television actor ever. Really, and his films are good as well. He's, especially ironically, his last three films are probably his three best or three of his best. What are they? Um, it's I enough think... said. Um, killing me, killing them softly. Sorry, and the drop. <laughs> what? <laughs> What are you laughing at? All sort of revolving around dying, oh, yeah. killing me softly. <laughs> and the drop. He landed in the bath. Yeah. Well, the what? drop, he <laughs> yeah. fell. It's oh, quite, wow. yeah, the irony there. But wow. yeah, Wild. those were his last three films, but Ethan. they're all mint. So go and check them out um, if there you was, bothered. There was Slippy Floor. Yeah, slippy Floor. There I, was, I, I, how, why is my chest hurting? Yeah. And there was, oof, this, this uh, tile's uh, imitating life or death even. Uh, Coach Zach Purvis says... Do we owe Murta an apology? With Mount Deal done, quickish, rumours of Onana being agreed soon. With how he did last year, maybe he's not shite. Well, no, we don't owe Murta an apology, right? I've seen this piece in the Manchester Evening News today about how wonderful John Murta is because he managed to get the Mount Deal over the line and it wasn't like yesteryear when United would pay loads of money for players and get our pants pulled down. Chelsea wanted £60 million for him. They got £60 million, yeah. albeit 55 up front and five later. It's not the, an amazing victory. It's a deal that is okay, but I don't. And I'm glad we got Mason Mount, but I don't think it's a. a this is some sh- sort of a example of how John Murta deserves huge credit. I've yet to see Manchester United get a proper bargain at the point of buying them. You Indeed. can look back yeah, at yeah, it and yeah. go, Bruno was a bargain because what he's done since we signed him, you go 46 million or whatever we paid yeah. for, him, well worth it. Other than Bruno, in retrospect. I've never seen us buy someone. And listen, I know Ericsson and Zlatan were free transfers. I get that. But pay money for someone and you go, wow, what a steal. Yeah, exactly. It never happens. And also there's the, the, the talk about the contract. One year left on his contract as well. Yeah. So he's paying £60 million for someone who would be free next year. And obviously, of course, then United would be competing with a lot of other clubs to try and get him on a, on a lucrative deal. £60 million quid for someone who's got a year left. It's, it's not... It's not- well done. It's not pats all and the back no. all round. I said this in my news this morning. Like, I'm glad we got him. The manager wants him. He's a good player, Champions League winner, and all that jazz. His numbers are good. But I don't think I'm not buying into this idea that John Murtagh has suddenly turned a corner. I know he wasn't responsible for a lot of transfers before Ed Woodward left. But since Ed Woodward's gone, we saw John Murtagh. I'm not laying into the guy, but I, I just think that for me, there's no example of him being brilliant. Like, we, he went to try and get the Rabiot deal over the line, then he met with his yeah. mum. That didn't happen. Casemiro, I think we paid around 60, 70 million for him. 
up, up to yeah, 80 million, yeah, which yeah, again, yeah. a great player, fantastic signing, but that's probably what you're going to pay for a 30 year old who you know wants to come to Manchester United. Varane, I think that's a decent deal. Decent. But again, there was injury questions. It's 40 odd million, it's kind of about right. Who else did we sign recently? Uh, oh, Anthony. Uh, a lot of money. Million a euros. lot of money. That's top end. Um, obviously, the Ericsson are free. Malassia, 40 million euros. Yep, decent deal. Not complaining about that one. Bit of a tap in. It's a huge transfer window for him this season. Yeah, I just don't. I'm not. I'm not saying he can't do well or he hasn't. You know, done okay. I just. I'm not. Miners. Someone said Richard Porter, 56 million for Lissandro Miners is about right. Yeah. I know he's well worth it, and I'm glad we got him. And but I didn't. When I looked at that transfer last year, I didn't go, wow. We've absolutely had Ajax over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 56 million for him. Uh, I just, I think we have to be honest about it. And I know that Mertens obviously been briefing the press or the press have lapped it up that what a great job he's done for getting this Mason Mount job, uh, deal over the line. But I'm not having it. I'm not having it at all. I think he's done all right. But we'll have to wait and see how it pans out. Jay's Park says, morning, Jay. Miss you, mate. Miss you too, bro. Um, yeah. What? Well... <laughs> Marty Smith says, Joe is so obsessed with eating, I think he'll eventually eat himself. <laughs> I wasn't going to read that, but you said what? I mean, I didn't have the brains to, to just pick another comment. Yeah, but yeah, well, you uh, asked me what we're up to today. I, don't, I, too, I have yeah. been eating. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah really. it makes I love that, though. Around, Joe is so obsessed with eating. I am obsessed. Have you seen that guy? Me. Who's that guy that does the restaurants? Not the restaurants. Who goes and eats at all the takeaways? Not you. Rate my takeaway. Is that oh. the one? Big lad. Big lad from Bolton. Sits on a chair. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's from... Uh, Leeds, isn't he? Leeds, like not, like Barnsley way. Yeah, he's not Leeds, because I won't mention him. He's Barnsley. Uh, is he Barnsley? He's all right. He's like, he gets a pass. Yeah. yeah. But he like he exploded, didn't he? Not literally, but uh, in the <laughs> YouTube there. game, he went from like 10,000, 20,000 views to like a million views, like yeah. almost overnight. Unbelievable. Like, class. But during lockdown, though, we were all a bit bored. Oh. Yeah, because he was taking his little table, wasn't he? Yeah. And eat, setting it up in the street outside someone's yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And eating like eating there. grandma's breakfast. It yeah. was called in, in Bolton. Yeah, yeah. And that was yeah, it. That yeah. was the one yeah. I saw. He's, he's a good lad. He's a good lad. It's just wholesome content, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think he's a bit. You know. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, you think he's, he's a bit interesting? Oh, you have to ruin it, don't you? He's in, hey. He's an interesting. Oh, I like him. I like him. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's just one of those. It's it's it, it's harmless. Do you know what I mean? Harmless content for just the twenty twenty three generation. Just a bloke with a deck chair and a table. Broke his deck chair, didn't he? What? Sat on it and it broke. Awful Mate, business. That he, it's, he was the other guy who, used, who went big on TikTok. The Oof. kids at school. Oh. Chicky connoisseur? Uh, uh, no. Ollie Ball. Ollie Ball. Ball. Ollie Ball. Ball. It's Ollie Ball yeah. here. Yeah, well, they were rate, what were they doing? They were just, were they doing re reviews? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's quite a saturated market you're in, kid. I'm, I'm left the review scene. Right, okay. Because you realise, moving. Look, yeah. Ollie Ball, your man from Barnsley, it's, you know, chicken connoisseur. Yeah, yeah. But he he's wasn't still a kid. kicking about. He was like, he's he looked young. Yeah. yeah. He's like Ty from Arsenal fan TV. Anyone just How old is he? 73. <laughs> I don't know. He's not 73. <laughs> he's, old, he's older than me. I'm 43. He's a lot older than me, I think. I think he's like 50 odd, but he dresses and acts like a child. Uh, but that chicken connoisseur, he's quite a baby face, and everyone yeah. thought he was a kid. And he, and he, he dressed like up as in a shirt and tie for like his first couple, yeah. which didn't help the cause of people thinking he was in uniform. Yeah. And then I was like, so why did he dress up as a tie? Maybe he wanted us to believe he was a... Maybe he did, but he kind of it worked, didn't it? Because I thought he was a kid. I thought he was like 16, 17. He, but he, someone was saying he's like, yeah, he's 28. It's like, it's like Freddie Adu. Remember when there's a rumours going around that he wasn't 15, he was like 27. Freddie Adu. Do you remember him? No. Nah. He was the kid, right? Get involved in the comments, you remember Freddie Adu. And these are rumours, I'm not saying it's true. Because <laughs> we haven't got enough money in the kit for legal teams anymore. So <laughs> we spent all that on Steve, um, on his legal teams. Um, you've, never, you've never had to use a legal team, have you? A uh, well, legal team, come on. Our legal <laughs> team's Google. <laughs> uh, we've threatened to sue people in before. <laughs> <laughs> we've threatened to mobilise our lawyers. <laughs> my, my lawyer's legal aid. Oh. Never eyes to get nicked. Um, yeah, Freddie Adu, right? He was this kid from, I think he was from Ghana originally. He went to America when he was little. And he um, he burst onto the scene as like this 15 year old, just protege, mint at football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got into the like, the I think he played for the, the US national team when he just turned 16. Crikey. Like, was everyone was like, this guy is the next big thing. Everyone was raving about him. And obviously, um, uh, soccer, as they call it over there isn't massive no 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 but he like broke through and everyone knew who was he was doing he was doing letterman and all that and you know he's doing Let letterman yeah i saw him on letterman or the tonight show one of like leno or letterman one of the wow. other wow so he everyone was like wow this kid he's you know he's he's, he's amazing he's gonna be um 
you know, it was going to be the next big thing. Clubs all over the world. He came to United, had trials at United. He didn't end up getting signed, <laughs> right? <laughs> but there was rumours that he wasn't 15, 16. Yeah. He was he actually look, 21, like? 22. Well, the thing is, now he's 34. He does look a lot older than 34. Does he? He does look, for me. But I'm not I'm not going down this route. Cause it's, I think picture, somebody... Got a of him. I think you can see... Producer Ethan, see if you can find a picture of, a, of Freddie Adu. Okay. As he looks In a retirement now. home. Yeah, is it, mate? I don't like this room as well because sometimes I think they're a bit, bit, you know, they're a bit dodgy, aren't they? People start saying, oh, is he really that age or whatever? But there were rumours about this kid. Regardless of that, his career didn't really go pan on, out. Go on, go on, go on. Like, he was meant to be like the next big thing. Everyone knew him. So he started off at DC United, right? Sound, yeah. When he was a kid. He was like yep. 16. Then he went to Real Salt Lake. He went to Benfica. All right. Benfica's yeah. decent. Boom. Massive club. One of the biggest in Europe. Obviously, in Manchester United, known well. We played him in the Champions League final, the European Cup final, 1968, beat him. From from Benfica, he went on loan to Monaco. Okay, big Monaco. Yeah, making his way to France now. They got some big yeah. players in France. Then he went to Belenenses. Belenenses. They're a, a team in Portugal. Right, he went on loan get, there. I want to get Belen away. Would you? No, <laughs> he played he's such, such highbrow humour when we have Joe on. <laughs> Bellens! <laughs> Hold on. I didn't say Belen. You said Belen. I read the name of the team. You, uh, you know, you uh, stopped. You, 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 you paused a little, Belen. A little double entendre. You paused well, and you went. Double entendre, just filth. Hold on, hold on, you went to Belen. 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 I was trying not to say what you said. Uh, then he went to, from there he played three games. Then he went to Aris in Greece. Then he went to Saiska Riskipur. In or raise a spore in Turkey on well, long again. On, on, then he came back to America. He went to Philadelphia Union. Nice. Yeah. Then he went to Bahia um, in Salvador. <laughs> then he went to Jagodina in Serbia. <laughs> then he went to Cups, K U P S in Finland. Then he went to Kufu ninety eight again in Finland. <laughs> Kufu ninety eight. I'm not making this up. This is what this is where he's he had a lot. He's had a lot of career moves. A lot of moves, he? not really. And all these clubs like one appearance, two appearances, three appearances. He went to the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Then he went to the Las Vegas Lights. Gee, what is he still going? Then he went to Osterlund Football for uh, No, no, no. You've <laughs> what? Say, Oster that, say that one again. Osterlund Football for Renning. <laughs> Right? Yeah, but well you had an extra ding ding on the end. Ding ding ding. No, I wasn't I trying to be facetious. I don't. Ding 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 ding. So he went to all these gaffs, all these places, and he's, yeah, his career just absolutely petered That's out. That's a shame. Is he, is. Goals, is he goal scorer? Oh, there he is. On the there screen, he is now. On the screen. Yeah, so he doesn't look that old. I'm maybe being a bit harsh. Um, he was an attacking midfielder and a forward. I mean, he played thir He played 17 times for his country, for the United nice. States. His last cap was 12 years ago, though. This is what I mean. That should have been his peak. <laughs> 12 years ago, the kid should have been 22. Oh, rubbish. So, I don't know what happened there. How did but, we get onto him? Um, I don't know. There was just, uh, he, was a, he was one of those, I think, on FIFA. He was big in the game on FIFA. I don't know how we got on there. Um, yeah, get involved in the comments and let us know what you think. Um, Edward Wilson says, I'm from America and don't even know these teams. FFS. Um, wait, Joe can do a show without Joe says DB Cooper. Uh, Richard Porter says champ manager. Yeah, I think so. There was a, ah, a thing on, he man. was a big, he was a popular player on, on one of the, uh, the football games. Did you heard of, have you, had you heard of Freddie Adu, Ethan? Uh, I heard of the name, uh, Trey, but that was the first time I seen him. I was having a flick through there and he, he, he does actually look quite old compared to what he actually is. Do you have his real age there? Well, this, the, the rumours were that, that, that well, the rumours were he's older, but yeah. according, officially, he's 34. He's 34. Right. So, Ooh. I just, I mean, I don't like to cast aspersions on anyone. You know, but those, were, those were the rumours, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying the truth. Here's the thing with uh, transfers and stuff, Ethan. As a Newcastle United fan, yeah. always nice to keep an eye on the uh, the rivals for next year. They think, think the rivals, we've always lost them. They never shut up about us. Came Be forth, Champions League football. Liverpool doing a little bit of early Flutes business. It. Flutes it, that will happen again. Chelsea are just losing loads of players, but they'll probably spend quite a bit last end of the season. Do you think Chelsea have got a good squad? No. <laughs> I think Chelsea ah. have got a lot of, it's quite a lot of, I don't know, say, say it's this guy said I'm obsessed with food, let's keep going down that way. Yeah. Right? It's like it's like someone trying to buy lots of expensive ingredients but not knowing what the dish is. Nice. Let's buy lobster, let's buy some uh, caviar, let's yeah. buy something. No one knows what they're trying to make. Yeah. Let's spend loads of money on expensive Wagyu and yeah. see if it'll make, if it'll work together. Yeah. No one, the Love chef, that. 
hasn't decided what he wants to cook yet. The older are just thrown loads of ingredients. So his way. And it don't work. Like, it you doesn't can't work. have caviar that, and steak. That's whatever. why we're get, we've got a bit of uh, uh, of uh, mount, e.g. truffle. Right. Give us the truffle over here. The Mount we'll Truffle, the Mason there. Mount Truffle. And then they've got rid of uh, a couple more. What's the uh, Averts has got to ask. Have you heard about his bet with me and Joe? Who? Ethan. No, my bet with... Uh, Go on. True. Uh, my, my bet is that... Um, this is a bit sad because I've, I've started to read now that Kai Havertz is going to play as an, as an eight for Arsenal. But my bet was originally, if he was to be a centre forward, he'd score 16 Premier League goals for Arsenal this season. Wow, big bet. And Joe says less. Joe, Joe says less. I'm, I'm the... the uh, the, the, the idiot, apparently. We, me and you had a bet, though, didn't we? I made it easier for you. Yeah, you remember? You, well, it was for a Mackey's. For a Mackey's. For Other 12. foods are available. I said 12. I don't think you get 12 goals. Joe, Premier League goals. What did Joe bet you? 16. No, is it money-wise? Oh, uh, tenner. Tenner. Oh, tenner. That's all right. It's been Mackey's these days, mate. Yeah, I, I don't me. actually. Yeah, I might actually it's get more out of it there. Uh, but I just don't... I don't know where you're getting your faith that he was going to get 16 Premier League goals from. I think he's... Uh, I quite like him for Germany, Jay. And I just feel like in that Arsenal team, you'll get a you'll get a few more chances. He's that kind of he's all right in that centre forward position. He can connect play. No, he's quite not well. though. It's quite an interesting conversation. He's rubbish. Listening to Joe and Ethan just talk about football, or, or in a neutral perspective. So when maybe Man United and Newcastle United are taking out of the equation, we were watching Man, uh, the City Bayern game. Mm. I think at my house once uh, when we were doing a little video for Slopper Joe's, and their conversations are quite. Not argumentative, but you disagree on stuff. You quite you love a good debate, don't you, Ethan? Oh uh, well, yeah. well, yeah. I'd, I'd I'd say, but especially with Joe, my and Joe's dynamic is that he always he always has to get one over me. He's always, he always <laughs> the, the, he what he dissects in my arguments. He says the the way I make arguments is bad, rather than what I what I say is like, oh, people like you try and disguise oh, a conversation that, like this. Right? No, 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 no. Here's a debate for you then. Go Newcastle on. United won't get top four next year. <gasps> um, yeah, that, I'd, it's very likely. I think the thing is, Joe, the last time when Newcastle got in European competition, finished fifth under Pardew, Europa League, the only signing we made ahead of the following season was Vernon and Anita, right? Right. And it was catastrophic. The squad the squad was too small. And we signed them and then we ended up finishing sixteenth in the Premier League. So you drop off. So I think if, if Newcastle only <laughs> makes sixteenth. Sixteenth. Yeah. And yeah. we got to the quarter finals of the Europa. So <laughs> what you need to do is you need to not only sign quality but you need to try and bulk out your squad a bit. And it's going to be hard for Newcastle w to do that in one window. So w wasn't it in your Newcastle where Kieran Dyer and David Batty started fighting each other? Oh yeah, that was so a Premier League in that, wasn't yeah. it? Was it? I thought it was in Europe. I'm, well, sure, I'm sure it was in the Europe. The only remember the only reason I think it's Premier League game. Oh, was, was it? It was daylight. Ah, I right. I might daylight. be wrong. I might be wrong. Then forgive me. It feels was it like David Batty? It was a daylight game. Who was it? Kieran Dyer and uh, um, R Boyer. Oh, Lee Boyer, sorry. Lee Boyer, what a mad time that was. Yeah, you're right. I think it? it was. Um, it was. Yeah, you're right. It was It was against, well, judging by who's splitting him up, I think it was against Villa. Yeah. Because I think there's a Villa player who's trying to help him. No, like, it's such a good moment. Like, though, it? uh, that's what you get at Newcastle United Football Club. Passion. Yeah. yeah. That passion that they start battering each other during the game. Um, Bill O'Reilly has been a member of the Academy for 18 months. Don't forget as well to hit that like button. Let's get to 500 likes, over 2,000 people watching. We appreciate your support. Um, he says, forget Freddie Adu. What about Sonny Pike? Ajax Academy player couldn't get him or his ponytail off flipping news round and Blue Peter. Do you remember Sonny Pike? Mm, no. This, this was a... I don't Sonny want to say a fall Pike. from grace. It's a bit harsh, that. But this was a kid, right, who he was compared as a kid or a youngster to Diego Maradona and George Best and all that, right? Oh, man, that's like, so tough, that, innit? Came from London or Enfield, I think he's from, right? And he went on trial with Ajax in the 90s. And it was like, wow, this kid got it. Yeah, Ajax wanted to sign him. I'm just looking now, some facts as well, because I don't know all this off the top of my head. He, he came back to England, signed for Leighton Orient. He was going to go to Chelsea, but that Late fell for him. I know, I know. Like, you know, respect to the O's and all that, but like, you know, come on. You're getting compared to Diego Maradona and George Best and you end up at Leighton Orient respect when you're a youngster. Like, come on. Such Do you know what I mean? What? Respect to the O's? 
I don't want this late in Orient. I used to work in Romford. I used to get a lot of late in Orient players yeah, and fans. In. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to diss their team, but let's have it right. The next George Best shouldn't be playing for Leighton Orient. No disrespect. So a proposed move to Chelsea fell through. What's that mean? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It fell through. They didn't want him. I had a mate who fell through the road once. He fell through the road? Yeah. How? You win. Sh- sued, sued the council. The r- he fell through the road? He was a big lad, though. Right. Big lad. He just what, was just big old in the road? No, it was the road. <laughs> right. And he fell through. <laughs> what? It just into looked, what? Into, well, the abyss, I think. <laughs> Luckily enough, he didn't fall, like, the whole body didn't go through. His knees went... Uh, the through the road? road. The, yeah, so when you talk about fell through, he could have fell through, like, you know... Is this a cartoon? No, no, he come no, out no, in Australia? He does look like a cartoon, actually. He's found himself now. Uh, but he's fell, he fell through the road. Um, Did you say he's found himself? Yeah, he, he went to India to find himself. Oh, love he that. He came back. Really? He's John Lewis now. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. This is sort of an interesting story I've ever heard. He fell through the road, went and found himself in India, and then came out. Now he works at John Lewis. Twenty percent off, you need it. Yeah, good. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll we'll check that out. Um, right. So was he all right though when he fell yeah, through yeah, the road? Yeah, Did he get yeah. some cash out of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah, does yeah. blame? There's a claim, yeah, of course. Falling through the road. Jesus wept. Um, yeah. So this kid, Sonny Pike, he went to Leighton Orient. Went to Chelsea. Moved to Chelsea. Fell through. Was on trial with both QPR and Palace before signing with Stevenage Borough. Oof. Oof. Now, Bora. it's it's dodgy that one, isn't it? I'm not having a dig at the kid, but he, he one minute he's being compared to George Best, he's got a Ajax. The next minute he ends up at Stevenage Borough after being linked with Chelsea. It's a four from Grimsby. Yeah, Steiner. it definitely is. I think he's been over overrated here. He had a trial at Grimsby before quitting football at the age of 18. What? This has all happened before 18. Yeah, and well, by 2016 he was working as a taxi driver. But this isn't a ta- this isn't a sad st- story. I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not cr- it was and, fake also, taxi. and also, and <laughs> also, he's now making happy. porn films. That's where the happiness yeah. comes in. Hey, now he's happy. No, he's not making porn films. Um, he's not on fake taxi. It's a good. Ta- it's a good porn name, though, isn't it? Yeah, Sonny Pike. Sonny Pike. Sonny Pike. Fake taxi. Um, <laughs> in February 2020, he opened a football academy, and he's married with two children. He oh. continues to be cited by the football media as the archetype of a heavily promoted child prodigy who ultimately did not achieve success in sports. So even though he didn't live up to his expectations, he opened a football academy and he's married with two kids. He's probably very happy. Yeah? Fair play to the kid. Sonny. And also, if he played non-league, he's mint. If you played non-league, you're very good. He's just, he was obviously overrated. He was, you know, Ajax and all that, and the new George Best. It is a shame when uh, if you people could, do that. Uh, so thanks Bill O'Reilly for pointing that out to us. If you could have had one of our sort of, the one that got away sort of protégés that we had, Lots of hope for, but they just dwindled away at United. It's you know of, the obvious. Which one is it? It's, Welbeck. It's Danny, Danny Welbeck. Wash your mouth out with soap and water. <laughs> Danny Welbeck was a legend and achieved everything you need to achieve in the game. What are you going to say? Because, you know, he's your favourite and he didn't really do that well. He won a Premier League, won his medal. Played yeah. for England multiple times, went to the World Cup, played in a World Cup, How played many in the Euros. Multiple? Over 30. 10. I reckon Danny Welbeck's got 30 England caps. I, I don't think you're right. How much do you want to bet? I'm, all right, you're going to go higher. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go around the table. Danny Welbeck, what are you saying? I think he's got quite a lot, true. I remember him scoring like a brace against Switzerland or whatever. Right, I'm say, I said yeah. 30. What are you saying? I'm going to say maybe not quite true. I'll, I'll say 26, but there and thereabouts. 22. You're going 22. I see now your face. Right, based. right. He's just Googled it. I haven't, I, I have, have I have, but I'm, I know he's the most accurate right you're saying 26 you're saying 22 the winner gets a free mcdonald's which is me or a kfc <laughs> um 42 wow 42 england caps it he's is. got 16 goals he's got almost as many goals as you thought he had caps so danny welbeck is not yeah, the apologies, answer bro. apologies he was also class for england danny welbeck he did get some decent he scored goals, that last yeah. minute goal against wales oh yeah uh, that was storage i think oh yeah Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, not him, the other one. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> I tell you why. I was in Benidorm watching it and I was very drunk. Right, okay. So I'm, I'm not, not going to throw you under the bus. Oh, also, you literally did. Yeah, I did, to be fair. Also, just while we're on the subject of Danny Welbeck, with his 42 England caps and 16 goals for England, including ones in the World Cup, right? Premier League winners' medal. Two Football League winners' medals. Two Charity Shield winners' medals. 
One, FIFA Club World Cup winner's medal. Oh. Two, FA Cup winner's medal. In fact, another Charity Shield winner's medal. Two, uh, a Europa League runners-up medal and another League Cup runners-up medal as well. Also, UEFA European Championships under-19 runner-up. And Jimmy Murphy Young Player of the Year Award, 2008. Yeah? Yeah. So let's not say Danny Welbeck didn't have a, gl a, a glorious career that is still going. He's still banging him okay, up Okay, okay. Yeah? So not Danny Welbeck. Go on. There's an obvious one. You go He's for it. like, if, if Sonny the Pike well, is the obvious, if Sonny Pike is the ar archetype for players, youngsters that didn't live up to their expectations, this kid is the, the one that everyone goes to as someone that had it all and just didn't achieve what he oh, should have. Oh, I know. It's Arnold as well. Go on then, Ethan, uh, redeem yourself. It's, it's Ravel Morrison. 100%. Ravel. You're a bit too young for Ravel, aren't you? No, I know Ravel Morrison. No, I mean, is like, did American? you watch him at the Academy? No. I didn't mean, I, don't, I know you know who he is. I meant like, did you, you're a bit too young to have watched him. Yeah, yeah. I watched him in the Academy in a team that had Lingard and Pogba and the Keane brothers and all that. He stood out. He was phenomenal. I thought you were going to say like Makeda. Makeda was good, wasn't it? I think Makeda had like, like that little purple patch, didn't he? Yeah. Rather than everyone was raving about him. He obviously scored that important goal against Villa and the other one against Sunderland. But Ravel Morrison was the one where you thought this kid has it all and it just didn't pan out. Oh, good to see uh, John Shin in the chat. He said Ravel Morrison. Rebecca Jade O'Sullivan said Ravel, Mor Ravel Morrison. Mike Knight Free says Ravel Morrison. Andy Ward said Makeda. Uh, Ross Murphy says Ravel Morrison. Yanazai. Yanazai was overhyped, wasn't he? He was over Yeah, because he was decent, but he scored that brace, didn't he, against Sunderland, and he had that chant that everyone was singing, and everyone thought he was going to be huge. The next big everyone thing. went big. You, you know what, Trey? I was, I was gutted when he didn't pick to play for England, because I thought we properly missed out. It's mad, that, isn't it? Yeah. Yanis I choosing to play for England. Because he played quite a bit for Belgium, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, he scored against England. How many, how many caps for Belgium, do you think? Oh, I'm going to go to 30. 30. Nah, that's too much, Ooh. that. Right, I'll, I'll, before I look, I'll go. You're going 30. Ethan, how many are you going? He scored against England in the World yeah. Cup, didn't he? So he must have played a few to be in major tournaments. Um, I'm going to go 30. not too bad. I'll go under that just... I might even say 26 again. You're going 26. You're going 30. I'll go higher. I'll go 31. Right, I've not Googled it. I'm that, going to Google it now. That's such a piss take number. 31. So you are, you're having me on here. Anything over 30, you've got correct. Right, all right, I'll go 35. Is that... Is Thank that you. <laughs> right? He had me over a barrel there. Oh, my God. I he, that's... No, I you, know, you know what you're doing. And, and, 31. Oh, wow. If it's, right, well, I'm miles away anyway. It's 15. <laughs> well done, Ethan. You do, do you, what did you guess, I Joe? got 30, you got 26, didn't you? <laughs> so do I win a McDonald's, eh? No, no you don't Who's get the... Who's giving out these Mackies? Well, you're, you've got to buy me an Ethan one because you've not God. won any yet. Right, pick a random footballer. Let's guess how many... Right, go on. You can pick the footballer. Go on, we'll let you do, <sighs> redeem yourself. A, one who failed to live up to expectations. That's the criteria. Even though Welbeck did. Well, I'm trying to think of the ones that... Like, Oberton. Oberton? Oberton? Where are you getting Oberton from? He's not going to have any caps, you nana. Hey, I'll give you the answer to that. <laughs> None. <laughs> no, no, no. I bet three. <laughs> Gabriel Obertan. Yeah. Right, I'm going none. How many are you going, Ethan? Well, this is a waste of time. It's obviously zero. Yeah. Right, it's Gabriel Obertan. How many caps he got for France? <laughs> none. <laughs> <laughs> what? I thought he might have snuck in there a little bit. <laughs> to be fair, he got a few for the under-21s. There you go. No, he didn't. How many he, did he get for the under-21s? He got 11 for the under-21s. I won. But he, like, he was never getting a France cap, was it? Also, he came around the time it's when France were mint. Tricky to pick players that were going to be good, did turn out good, but have also got caps to their country. Can you name another one? Oh, we're well, going to be good. Yeah, didn't turn out good, but See, I've got it's caps. That, for it's that country. one of. Oh, I've got one. Go on. Uh, what about Butner? Is Bortner. he was he Dutch? Is he Dutch? I think he was. He was. I was getting. I know it's terrible. This. He was either Dutch or Belgian. I think he was Dutch. You think Alexander Butner's got caps for his country? Yeah, it's, I would have thought Holland or the Netherlands. Right, how many are you going for them? I'm going for zero. I don't think you got anywhere near a Dutch cap. I can't go zero, so I'll go. Well, you one. go one. <laughs> I'll go four. You're going four. How many are you going, Eve? Uh, I'm, you going, him. I'm going one. Just, just one cap. Don't be tight on Jay. It's all right. It's, it's, it's money in the bank. Zero. Uh, yeah, so you're picking, no. right? You're picking good countries 
and terrible footballers. Well, go on then. Give us, a, like, give us another one like, then. A country that's like I don't know. You can you can, I've got one for you. What about Makeda? I've got a proper niche one. Go on, Pat McGibbon. Pat. <laughs> I. Okay. I remember him when I was a kid. A bit, I met him at the cliff once. He gave me his autograph and I asked someone who he was. But he was Pat McGibbon. Yeah, he was. I mean, um, even I got to decide how many caps he had for for Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. I reckon he got one. <laughs> oh, that right, go on. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Kind of I'm trying to figure then. out what your oh, yeah. I, I don't know if it meant now. zero or yeah. more than one. Yeah. Even what did you think is considering you've never never neither of you have heard of him, which is fair enough because he was he played once for United. Well, I think as a well, I think the Northern Ireland team can't be too competitive to get into. Yeah. So I think he could have made a handful. I'm going to say six. What are you saying? I'm going to say zero. Ethan hit the post. Seven. Seven. Oh. I've got one. Go on. Andy Carroll. Shut up. He made he made a few appearances. Mate, this is he, what we're going to do. Liverpool yeah, paid he, 35 million quid. Yes, for him, but no. he never, never lived yeah, up to 35. his expectation. Oh, right, all right. Did he? That's the question. Yeah, all right. It's the ki- criteria. No. All right. The criteria. The criteria. How many? How many? I think I'm going to go 22. I'm going to go. 30. You're going 30. What are you going with? I hate Andy Carroll, by the way. Yeah, I don't like him. I'm going to say 18. I remember him scoring a goal against, I think it was Ghana. I think. That's the only He's absolute goal I recall. Who injured Christian Eriksen deliberately, in my opinion. No, Ethan, you're closest. What did you say? 30. No, we, we, me and you were on crack, thinking he got anywhere near 20 or 30 Where? caps. Nine. Nine. Do you remember when it was like... The future, yeah. Andy Carroll. You thought he was going to be world beating. Uh, L- Liverpool paid all that money for him. Paid a lot, didn't they? Bought Suarez. 35 million, and, yeah. And I think, yeah, and they spent a fortune. But they got the money, like, it was all like, we, we only spent the Torres money, so it doesn't count. I was well, heartbroken when they left Newcastle because my granddad rang me on deadline day. I thought he was just doing a nice catch up. <laughs> and he broke the news to us, and I was, I was heartbroken. Really? Yeah, because we're panicked and brought in Stephen Island as a. Is like on on loan as a and as an option from City. Yeah, Stephen Island used to be decent, you know. There's another one. Stephen Island was one that went under the radar. How many Island like, caps he got? I reckon he's. I mean, he had that incident, didn't he, with Island? What was that? Do you not remember with his dead gram? Where what? he lied. Do you, you know, remember with Stephen Island? No. Right, so Stephen Island's away with Island, and he leaves early, goes back home, and he said it's my grandma's died or something, right? And then someone got hold of his grandma. She's alive. What kidnapped her? No, like someone in, like seen her and was oh. like, your grandma's not dead. I've just seen her down the pub or whatever. And he went, oh, no, it's my other grandma. Oh, and then no. someone went, well, it's not your other grandma. Someone oh. else went, I've just seen your other grandma. So it was, so he, he, I, I think he just wanted to get off. I think he might have had a few things going on. My, my, one of my relatives is dead excuse. Pick one that no one's going to be yeah, like, seeing. Yeah, because it was like, I'm trying to, I'm, I don't want to get this wrong. Because he, he was actually highly rated when he was younger, Stephen Island. So yeah, he. Um, Do you remember Stephen Island, Ethan? I suppose well, he played for Newcastle. Well, I think he played maybe two games for Newcastle when we loaned him, and he described the loan move as a waste of time. So I don't remember him too fondly, sadly. Is there any other uh, your granddad calls you with Newcastle news? <laughs> right. you've got? Do well, you know what he did as well? <laughs> sorry to just carry on it. Sorry, that's all right. Right, he went for the actual here, right? So I'm just looking here on Wikipedia. Wikipedia's never wrong. He said, in September 2007, Ireland was at the centre of controversy when in the immediate aftermath of a Republic of Ireland national match and days before their crunch match against the Czech Republic, coach Steve Storm informed him of a telephone call he'd just received from his girlfriend reporting the death of his maternal, as maternal grandmother. So, Storm quickly consented to Ireland's compassionate leave on these grounds. Private jet was chartered for his return. So he's gone. My, my, my grandma's died. However, the media quickly discovered that Ireland's grandmother was not dead. At which point, Ireland announced it was pat- his paternal gram- grandmother who died. There's so many islands here, I'm getting a bit confused. Yeah, sorry. Um, but yet again, should we just call him Stephen to make it easier? And his grandmother's uh, funeral song was Islands in the Stream as well, which is even more confusing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yet again, reporters discovered that Stephen's paternal grandmother was also still alive. Wow. And her relatives had threatened to sue one of the newspapers that had reported her death. Stephen changed his story again, saying one of his grandfathers had divorced and it was his second wife who had died 
That was also quickly discovered to be oh untrue. Oh, God, just give up. I mean... What did he end up doing, just admitting that you like? No, yeah. I think he killed one of my grandmothers. Allegedly. Allegedly. I mean, listen, he always had stuff going on. It was just a bizarre episode in his life. But the, my point was, he was um, he was highly rated as a youngster. And he was a city, I think he was City's player of the year. Didn't he go to Villa? And he was Villa's he player was of the year. But he just injuries and then, obviously, other stuff going on for him as well. Sort of, sort of did for him. So, Stephen Island, how many caps do you think he got? For Island, oh, if I keep saying thirty, someone's someone's got to be close to that. Thirty. Uh, Ethan, oh, he was good, Stephen Island. Um, he must have done all right. I'm gonna give him a bang on twenty. Right, his goal scoring ratio is excellent. His goal scoring ratio is two goals for every three games. Why did he score three? Two goals. He's, three. He's, he's, his total number of goals is four. That's oh, to do the maths. Four, six. <laughs> oh. six. Six appearances. I mean, to be fair, after what went on, I'm not surprised the the, the, the Island manager probably thought, nah, you, you're not for me. Because I think this was relatively early on as well in his career, so that probably did for him in terms of Ireland. But yeah, he, he was he was de- another one. But there's loads of players that sort of did well that didn't quite live up yeah, to expectations. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Phil Jones at one point, everyone thought was going to be the next big thing. How many England caps has Phil Jones got? That's a good question. Not many. Not I'll, many. I will get to the uh, Five. super chats. No, I, I think Phil Jones has got... I'm going to go 32. How many are you going, Ethan? 32 uh, caps I'm going with. Um, oh, he did play a bit for England. Um, Why can I never, never remember England fucking games? I'm going to say um, 15. But also, a, a quick comment just on Stephen Ireland. It, it must be really cool to have, like... An Ireland shirt that says Ireland on the back. I'd quite like a player for England to be called England, so I can have England on the back. Anyway, sometimes you do wonder why you gave him a mask. <laughs> <you>? I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> why would that be cool? Was it? Why would it be cool? Yeah. Oh, just you know, I can England shirt, England on the you back. You can still <laughs> put England on the back of your shirt if you want. <laughs> yeah, but then, then if you did that, shirt, you'd look pathetic. Right. Okay. Maybe change your name when you get your first cap. To England, yeah, good luck. That'll, that. that'll save the the drama. How many caps, caps are you saying for Phil Jones? And I'll get into the chat in a minute. Um, I know there's I, loads of comments. I just gave my answer, but I must admit 15. I can't recall. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I forgot. In that absolute <laughs> rabbit hole, we went down. How many do you say? I said thirty. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. I said eight. You said eight. I said thirty-two. I was the closest. He's got twenty-seven. Oh, he's had a decent career, Phil Jones. But I mean, he obviously. Is he you retired know, from football in general? I don't know. He's retired from cashing his cheque at United every He's week. left United. Do you think he'll play for anyone? Um, oh, someone. Rebecca Jade O'Sullivan. Ah, I've just saw that, Trey. Has, has pointed something out to your son. Good good point. Is what? it is Beth, Beth England will have an England shirt, so you can get England on the back if you See? get a Beth England yeah. shirt. Good point, man. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's get into some of these comments. Uh, Norv in the super chat says, Jay did mushrooms one, stuffed mushrooms, a whole platter, one of the best scenes on The f- Sopranos. Yes. Llewellyn um, says, played with a lad called Ramon or Ramon Caliste. We all convinced he'd make it big. Does that name ring a bell? I don't know. Let's have a little bit of a Google. Caliste does. Does it? Milkshake. Do you know what? How are you, t- how are you two on the same channel week in, week out? And how's it popular? <laughs> Jesus wept. Um, <laughs> he was at United. He was dubbed the next Ryan Giggs. Jeez. I don't remember him. Who we're talking about here? Ramon sorry. Caliste. Ramon Caliste. I have no idea who that man is. No, well, he went from. <laughs> Why'd you say it like you've been accused of a crime? I have no idea who that man is, like and I definitely did not shoot him. I'm drum play about yeah. that, the fucking. Oh, I, officer. I, I have I'm no <laughs> idea who that man is, and I certainly did not commit this crime. <laughs> Why did you say it like that? Um, Have you seen that video of that man, Dre, who um, he goes to get his takeaway food from a shop and the, the reveal that they're putting drugs underneath the burgers or whatever. And he's like, oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. that. so good, that. Really? I don't see that see after that. He goes, what? what? No, no, no. Um, yeah, Ramon Caliste had a very good career. Well, not a very good career. He started off well and then it all just went wrong. He was at Liverpool as well. This is bizarre. Um, and then he ended up without a club, sort of three years or... Six, six years after he was at United as a kid so it happens to a lot of youngsters that to be fair uh, Danny Shields says afternoon lads anyone other than housing over in Dublin the weekend of the Paddock FC and United friendlies hope to see you uh, up the Paddock um, 
up the reds. Yeah, we'll all be there. We're all going to be over there. So make sure we will be doing an event over there. Make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We will give you an update there. We're going to be doing a live event in Dublin when we're over there. I think it'll be the night before the game against... Who were playing in Dublin? I can't remember. The night before the Dublin game. Joe, where can people find you? What is it done? It's 45 minutes unless you want to continue. Have we? Yeah. Blimey, that was quick, wasn't it? Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, listen, I think well, as soon as Ethan can do a thumbnail, we're going to have a new Sloppy Joe's podcast out. So Sloppy Joe's podcast. I need to get the email out then. Just Sloppy Joe's podcast. Yeah, <laughs> right. The email is at gmail.com. But just go Sloppy Joe's podcast. Thank you. Right, Sloppy Joe's podcast. Go check it out. Very funny. Ethan, you're on that podcast as well. Uh, you're going to put your camera back on oh, yourself. Oh, yes, I am. Um, just on the topic of shirts, I've seen some comments there. Uh, I'm wearing my one pound charity shop shirt, Jay. Just wanted to show that off. Why did that sound like a tongue twister to you? Oh, one, one pound charity, charity shop, shop shirt, Jay. shirt, Jay. Was that a conscientious decision? Did you have to spend the pound or was that just luck? Um, well, I I was trying to- You said to... it like it was a bet or something. I'm wearing my one pound charity shop shirt, Jay, like we agreed. Well, like, I, I, I just thought- I don't know the reference. It's, it's a good thing to do to buy um, stuff from charity. To give to charity. What a quid! Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what. Over the moon with that you've donation. just saw UNICEF. You fucker. You, apparently, UNICEF have closed down now because yeah. they don't need any more donations. It is because good to your give pound. To charity. Yeah. More than a quid. A quid. Well, <laughs> tell you what. Whatever, whatever charity you've donated to, they can close now because they, they they've all, they've fixed anymore. it. But yeah, there's no. That's what that's what they wanted. I give what the charity wanted. So therefore, no. Do you know what? Right. When in my old job, one of my old jobs, we had this thing. You know, like we'll all go out and we'll all dress up. And one of the bosses went, what we'll do is, right, you've got a fiver as your budget and you've got to buy all your clothes from a charity shop, your outfit yeah. for the night out, right? That's, That's it. Idea. Yeah. Well, it's not because we did that, right? So bought like a fiver. You had a fiver, you had to get receipts as well as a show. Like, like I've spent a fiver on this outfit. So I went to the charity shop, bought like a pair of pants or something and a shirt. For, like, you Classic. Know, yeah, just awful. But it, it was like, you know, within the budget. We were in Spoons before we all got to town, right? And I bumped into <laughs> some people that I know. And they were like, hi, Jay, how's it going? Uh, this oh. isn't going to... Go on. And they were like, oh, right, well, it seems like, I'll just have to tell you who you're here with. And I pointed over to my group of people as well. And we just all looked like scrubs, oh. to be honest with you. <laughs> it didn't look like we dressed up. It just looked weird. That because mental. if you're all dressed up, you're like, if you're all like, oh, yeah, we're yeah, going yeah. to go out and dress up as, you know, elves or whatever, then people can see. We just looked <laughs> like we had terrible tasting clothes. It just looked horrible. And I was just sort of like, you know, you feel yourself going red. And then I went, uh, basically what we've done, we've decided we've got to buy a, you know, trying to explain it, which made it yeah, worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was awful. I honestly, honestly. thought you were going to say that the person came up to you went, I used to own that. that. I used to own that shirt. <laughs> I gave it to a charity shop. I made that shirt and I gave it to a charity shop. <laughs> Are you shopping in charity shops? Uh, listen, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks to everyone who got involved in the com comments of the chat. I think we covered Senag's master plan <laughs> quite in depth there. I think we spoke about it thoroughly. Senag's master plan is basically he's going to buy loads of players and we're going to win the league. Right, that's that. Go and check out Joe and Ethan on Sloppy Joe's. You know where to find me. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with the transfer review as well. We'll be back with loads of content over the weekend. Make sure you are hitting subscribe as well. Want to get seven? No, we're at seven hundred. Want to get to eight hundred thousand subscribers by the end of the season? This has been the Brew. Thanks for watching.